I'm just um, going to start a new video series shortly. Um, I'm buying a pizza oven, so I'm having that made at present. Um, Wood-fired pizza oven, so it's a guy in um, Christchurch, New Zealand. Polish guy who makes these at home, uh, they're handmade. Um, it takes them a couple of weeks to make it, so I haven't received, uh, haven't had delivery of it yet. Uh, I'll be here in the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to put up a picture of it, what I've got coming. Um, and it's roughly a meter, meter cubed, about 400 kilos. Um, so it's going to go out on my deck here under the pergola. I've got a wisteria growing up here. I can't really see that very well. Um, big concrete slab, and it will just sit in the corner there under the wisteria. So yeah, I'll put a picture up. Um, so what I want to do is do a few videos uh, experimenting with different wood. So I want to see um, whether what, what's best for cooking basically, what burns well, what burns cleanly, um, whether the smoke or the wood imparts any flavours to what I'm cooking. So it's not just for cooking pizza, this oven, it'll do all sorts of stuff, do meat, um, smoking, like a barbecue smoking, uh, you can shut the flue right down. Um, so you can cook virtually anything in it, so I'm looking forward to having a bit of an experiment. So I've been reading up a bit about what's good. Um, most of the sites on the internet recommend uh, hardwood, um, angiosperms over softwood, conifers, uh, gymnosperms. So I've got primarily hardwood here in front of me. I have got one conifer I've got on the far left there, which is it's a piece of thuja. Um, AKA Western Red Cedar, and this stuff smells amazing. Um, obviously, you can't smell it through the video, but you have to take my word for it, it smells amazing when you cut it. Um, and it's actually stayed quite heavy considering it's been drying out for a good six months. So, I will cut that up a bit smaller and see what it's like. Um, I'd imagine it'll smell quite nice. Um, moving along here, I have a piece of, this is a nectarine tree that I cut down again during New Zealand had a lockdown, um, early 2020, so I had a few months at home, so I got the chainsaw out and cut lots of things down, tied it up in the garden, and that is an old nectarine tree. So, quite heavy, quite solid still, and a lot of the stuff you read on the net will recommend using fruit, wood. Or in, in your pizza oven, so got high hopes for that. I don't have a lot of it, I've got um, some nectarine and I've got also quite a large almond tree I cut down, um, which looks quite similar to that. So, moving along, uh, this is a piece of native silver beech, so New Zealand. Um, Nothophagus is the genus, I can't remember what the species is, but um, known as silver beech. That's actually quite light, um, straight grained wood, really easy to split. Um, it doesn't have much scent to smelling the wood, um, so yeah, I think pretty light for a hardwood, so we'll see how that goes. I've got quite a lot of that that I've brought back from the west coast. This is another one I've brought back from the west coast, this is a piece of gorse. Um, genus is Ulex. This is weed in New Zealand, um, especially on the west coast. It grows basically everywhere, out of control. Um, and that, looking at the growth rings, is probably around a 10 year old piece of gorse. It's actually extremely heavy. Um, very, very dense wood and highly regarded here as firewood. It's just a pain nuisance to cut. You can see that one's still got the prickles on it. It's opened up quite a lot just uh, sitting in the sun. But still still quite a solid heavy piece of wood. Um, so I'd imagine that will make pretty good firewood. Um, and I'd imagine in, in an oven that will burn nice and hot and give good coals. Um, and gorse, we burn a lot of it here um, just to get rid of it. And it smells, it's got quite a distinctive nice smell. So yeah. 
I can get my hands on quite a lot of that, so my intent is if it's, if it's good for the oven I'll bring quite a lot back from the west coast. Um, probably just get the chainsaw out and cut a few boxes every time I'm over there. Okay, what else have we got? That is a piece of Gladitia, aka Honey Locust. That's a really solid bit of wood that's been drying up for been probably over a year, and it's still pretty, um, pretty dense. Pretty heavy, so should be another good hardwood to try. I've got here a piece of um, manuka, leptospermum. That's extremely dense. That'll be the densest bit of wood here, probably. Um, that's also been drying up for over a year. That was just something growing in my garden as an ornamental that I cut down. Um, quite a few ornamental um, cultivars here in New Zealand. It's quite attractive actually, some red flowered ones. The only one, reason I cut that down is that it was starting to die. Um, that is very highly regarded in New Zealand for firewood and a lot of people use it for cooking as well. Um, quite expensive to buy. Probably the most expensive firewood you can buy in New Zealand, um, Manuka. So yeah, that, that should be pretty good. Um, also got here a piece of grape, a grapevine. So I live in Marlborough, New Zealand. This is probably one of the top wine producing regions in New Zealand, or in the world rather. Um, and people are always pulling out old vines here and putting in new ones. So I saw a mountain of these at the side of the road to give away, stopped, put them on my trailer, took them home and cut them up. So I've got quite a lot of that, which is old grapevine. And I've had that sitting there drying out for a while in the sun. Um, it's still pretty dense, so it should be good firewood. It's just a bit of a mongrel to cut up. Can't really, I don't know, I think I struggle to split that much, so probably it's going to end up putting big hunks of it on the fire. Um, hope that it burns down to embers. So yeah, I've seen uh, on the web other people using that on cooking ovens, so should be interesting to see how it goes. It's just a shame I've wrecked um, at least one, one chainsaw chain cutting that with uh, stones in the, in the knots, which is a pain. But anyway, I've got lots of that to burn. Um, lastly, another piece of wood out of my suburban garden here. Oh, that's extremely heavy. That would actually be the heaviest bit of wood here by far, but that is green. I only just cut that up on the weekend. Um, and that's a piece of gum. That is Eucalyptus leucoxylon, also known as yellow gum. Very common ornamental here in New Zealand. Usually got um, red flowers in winter. And that is one I grew from seed. That's about four or five years old, so had it in my suburban garden and it was getting absolutely huge. Um, this thing grows a phenomenal rate. You can see I've split that and it's... That's one thing with these, uh, the growth rings, you can't really... You can't really see the growth rings, so I can't show you exactly how fast it grows, but I can tell you these things grow unbelievably fast. And this is... According to some of the books I've read, this here should be close to ton per cubic meter density which is um, extremely dense wood that would definitely sink if you threw it in the water so yeah that's going to need drying out so another thing I want to have a bit of a trial with with the oven is um, I see a lot of people recommending after you've cooked in your pizza oven because it takes over 24 hours for them to cool down you can actually dry out your next lot of burning wood in the oven after you've used it, so basically use it as a kiln to kiln dry your uh, next next lot of firewood you're going to use for your subsequent cooking. So, so there you go. That's what I've got lined up. So that'll um, keep me busy. Yeah. So I've got um, I've got eight different species there to try out. Um, and I'm always on the lookout as well for, for other unusual wood to try. So, yep, once I've got this thing and, and got it up and running, I will um, 
do a few videos on the results. So, yep, check back then.